you're gonna cave right into the bottom of that dune and it happens all the time. As some of you may know, I am an enormous dune enthusiast. I go to Little Sahara in Oklahoma. That's where I usually ride my sand. Um, we just talked about Appalachia Bay's trails, and now I want to shift over to probably my very favorite ride spot that I've ever been to as far as riding fast, jumping, trails, camping. Um, I just It's a rad place to film. I absolutely love it. Little Sahara, Oklahoma, located in Waynoka in the northwest part of Oklahoma. It's in a small town, oil field town. Um, not a lot to offer. Camping, campgrounds, it's an Oklahoma State Park. Um, it's, you know, they run it with the rangers. They've got park employees. They have uh, facilities. It's a $10 per person to ride, doesn't matter how old they are. There's a helmet law for anyone under the age of 18, and you can ride at night. You can ride all day. It does not close for any reason at all in the year, just never. Um, you can rent spots throughout the, e, uh, the North and South camp. There's a shop there called Little Sahara Sand Sports. They have a lot of parts, a lot of accessories. Um, there's not really any grocery. There's no, to my knowledge anymore, and there's no restaurants. There's a few gas stations. Um, but yeah, you pretty much need to show up there prepared for uh, yourself to not have any food outside of your camp. Uh, it's pretty much just a ghost town now. But this is Little Sahara in Waynoka, Oklahoma. Now you can see that in parts of the season you can catch this place untouched. These are pretty much our ruts that we that we uh, left there. It was, I mean, perfectly smooth. This is a Razor 1000. You can take any kind of machine there. Um, there's me on my quad, my buddy Alex on a bike, my brother and my Razor. And I mean, set of paddles and you're at home. Trails are awesome. There's a, a lot of whoops. There's awesome bowls to shred. I mean, it is my absolute favorite place to ride. Um, if I had one complaint, it's that it's not big enough, which is you just can't do anything about it. It's 1,500 acres, so it's roughly six miles long. And there's a south part of the dunes, which is what I would be... I would describe that as the easier part of the dunes. And then there is the north part of the dunes, which is immediately you're in uh, big dune territory. Buttercup, I'm sure you've heard of that if you've done any research. It's definitely one of those places that you need to be experienced. I've seen, I've seen it a hundred times. People just think they've got it under control. They leap off what they think. You know, this looks like it's flat ground. This looks like it's completely flat ground all the way. You don't know that on the other side of that, there's a two, three foot drop off. Just go straight down. And you can't tell because you're already too far gone. You're going too fast and you're going to roll off. You're going to lose the ground underneath you and you're just going to dive off. And then all it takes is that, you know, 15, 20 miles an hour for you to not have any momentum. Your suspension's not going to work. You're going to cave right into the bottom of that dune. And it happens all the time. These guys, they're experienced. These are the sand cars. You see a lot of these there too. They, they pretty much rule the roost. If you see these guys coming, um, if they're not using a spotter, which these guys are, but if, and this is on the drag strip, if you don't have anyone looking out for these guys, move out of the way because, you know, some of them, not these guys, but some of them can really be pretty ruthless in what they think is their right of way. So look out. And I don't mean to scare anybody. It's just something to keep, you know, keep in mind. Um, my friends use them to cart their families around. They like to have fun in sections where we say, you know, go or don't go. I, I suggest highly that if you are going to do any sort of controlled stunt, whether it be a wheelie or a jump in a specific contained area, get yourself a spotter. Someone you can trust who doesn't wear their ass as a hat. And I mean someone who can look around and see, assess the situation, look north, look south, east, west, say... If my buddy's coming, is he going to hit anybody? And if anyone comes, are they going to hit my buddy? Use your, use your head. Let's see. So this is a segment from when I first got my razor. Um, there's a lot of dune action in this. 
I love my Razer Polaris XP 1000 non-turbo. Um, perfect for me. I love it in the rocks. I love it in the sand. I love it in the river. Um, it's an outstanding machine. So this is Buttercup right here. Officially the tallest dune, depending on which way the wind is blowing. But you can see from here, this thing climbs it with ease. And the reason that everyone has a flag is so that if I was up here on the peak of this dune, someone was coming that way, they would see my flag wave around. You know, it's an attempt to raise awareness before you maybe collide. Someone spotting me right here. That's a spotter. He's also filming, but I know that guy's checking to see who's where. Where's, where's the oncoming traffic? Am I safe? So everything's got a level of risk to it, but you can manage that with a little competency. So this is me and my buddy just out there shredding around. And like I said, with a little bit of, you know, this, you can go a long way in the dunes. There's no real right of way, but this is sand highway. Uh, there's no one there, so I, and we knew no one was there, so we kind of took the liberty, to, you know, cover as many angles we could, so we went down the left side, went down the right side. But if there's a big group there, go down the right side. If, you know, just kind of, if you see someone coming, use it like a highway. Um, a lot of people, jump out of the dunes in the middle of the day. So if I had to suggest a time to ride the dunes and the trails, I would say do it at night. You know, we're, we're doing this right now. Again, very dull weekend. Probably not the worst idea to wait till a really slow weekend to do this kind of thing in the trails because out of nowhere, someone just come around. At night, you have the advantage of seeing lights, seeing things coming at you so you can slow down and compensate. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's an absolute blast. Great family fun. Um, the community, the, everyone's so nice. I mean, you can literally talk to anyone next door and they're going to have the same thing in common with you. I highly suggest Little Sahara in Waynoka, Oklahoma to anyone from beginner to experience. Just use your head. You know, you wouldn't hop into a brand new car and floor it. Hopefully. I know some of you might say you will, but treat this like you would an airplane. Baby steps. But anyway, let me know what you guys think. B Shipman Films YouTube. Like, subscribe, share, comment. Hit that notification bell. I know you guys were with me in the beginning when I started doing Ronnie Mac videos and some other things and motocross and ATVs. And I do some documentaries on here. I've got FMX and the Life, Occupational Hazard, Insanity Fully Torqued. I mean, I've got a, a, a bunch of stuff on here for free. So the way that I keep going is I get ads brought in. You guys help me with that. Let's get this page up there. I've, I'm at 32,000 subscribers. Let's see if we can't get to uh, 40 by the end of the year. Thank you guys. Take it easy.